All right, folks. So we've already discussed, you know, how to form igneous rocks in the process of crystallization, you know, and turning them into a solid rock. But how do we, you know, melt them in the first place to get the igneous rock, right? So again, right, you know, uh, whoops. Stop it. Anyway, so here we have a solid, right? So it's deep in the earth, right? Heat is being applied, right? But it's staying in a solid form because it's under pressure, right? So the rock deep in the earth under pressure, that gives it a little, you know, more resistance to heat, shall we say, uh, and can stay as solid at higher temperatures, right? So we can increase the temperature, of course, right? And we can vibrate these atoms enough finally to, to break these bonds, right? So we can turn them into a liquid, right? So we break these bonds up from a solid and, you know, into a liquid and eventually, you know, can melt that all the way into a complete liquid, right? So breaking those bonds, right? That, that turns it from a solid into a liquid, right? But uh, how could changing temperature or pressure cause this melting, right? Well, obviously adding more temperature could cause the melting, but let's look at it, right? So here is kind of a temperature and pressure gradient down into our earth, right? So two things you cannot untie uh, from each other as you go deeper in our earth, you get higher pressure and higher temperature. So the deeper you go, the more pressure, but also the higher the temperatures, right? So, like I said in the last slide, right, there's the, you know, the solid being held together by those pressures, right? Uh, that creates a, a solid liquidous line, kind of, you know, for, for rocks, basically. Um, uh, that goes down into the earth, and it's at this, this exact slope because that's how the, the gradient of temperature and pressure increase as you go from the surface of our planet down, right? So, let's see where the conditions are, where rocks are liquid and rocks are solid, right? So, here we have anything in the in the brownish area over here, right? A and C, these are obviously solid rocks, right? B is obviously in the liquid range, right? And D is right on the line, right? So, he's melting as we speak, if you will, right? So, again, this line slopes because of the increased pressure you know, as we go deeper in the earth, even though we have higher temperature, the increased pressure acts to keep those, those minerals as solids, right? So let's look at point A, right? How could we change conditions at point A to cause it to melt, right? Well, about the only thing we have an option to do, right, is to increase the temperature, right, from A, say, to B, right? So if we just increase the temperature, not changing the pressure at all, so it's not going deeper, getting buried, right, staying at the same elevation, we're just, you know, increasing the temperature around it, we can cause that rock to melt, right? But now let's look at the rock at point C, right? What could we make happen to this rock that would cause it to melt? Or what could we do to this rock that would cause it to melt? Well, just like A, right, we could you know, just increase the temperature around the rock, not bury it deeper or anything, not add pressure, and that would cause it to to uh, to melt, right? But there's another thing we could do here as well, right? We could reduce the pressure on it, right? Keep the temperature the same, but reduce the pressure and cause rock at point C, right, to melt, right? Now it is a liquid. How do we reduce the pressure, right? There's a couple different ways, right? We can... Um, uh, you know, raise, uh, we can uh, pull things apart, divergent margins, usually a low pressure system, right? Or uh, we can, you know, unbury something, something like that, right? All right, so let's check out point A, right? Uh, and point A, we'll, we'll check it out being heated with an increase in, in, in temperature and pressure or with just an increase in the temperature, right? So as we saw in the last one, A, we can increase, right, in temperature only and cause it to melt, right? But if we take that rock and bury it, it's going to follow the same slope as this line, right? So the deeper it goes, right, the more pressure it's under, the, but the more temperature it experiences too. So we can heat that rock up by burying it deeper and deeper and deeper, right, till it's, you know, as hot as it would be at point B here, but it remains a solid because of that extra pressure with burial, 
right? So if we take that rock, right, from say point C, right, and then uplift it very rapidly, right, so it doesn't have time to cool off, right, what we see is what's called decompression melting, right? So we go from here, we don't really reduce the temperature, we just reduce the pressure on top of it, right, by thrusting it up, right, putting less pressure on top. Simply doing that causes it to melt. And this is what we see at our divergent margins. We have decompression melting as things are pulling apart. Our lithosphere is the thinnest, the weakest there, right? The hottest. Uh, and and that's where, you know, as we pull it apart, something's going to fill it in. It's going to be that asthenosphere as that rises, right? Uh, you know, up into that dive, that spreading center, it decompresses and melts, right? So we take that partially molten asthenosphere and we melt it by decompressing it, right? There's another interesting thing that we can do uh, to rocks, and that is add water, right? So we add liquid to the system, and this changes the whole story, right? So a rock at point E, let's say when it was dry, we have our, our happy liquid solid line with temperature and pressure, right? Going down deep, 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 right? So this is the line of burial, right? E would be a, a happy solid, right? However, if we add water to that system, simply by adding water to that system, not changing the temperature, not changing the pressure, just adding water, right? That moves this line over to this interesting curve here. This is our wet line and our dry line, right? So just adding water to the system causes that rock or that, that uh, asthenosphere to melt, right? And this is what we see at convergent margins, right? As that plate subducts, water is driven off the plate and added to the asthenosphere, that causes it to melt and rise buoyantly, right? So again, we add a small amount of water to the hot, dry rocks, it's gonna cause that guy to melt, right? Uh, some other interesting things can happen with magma. We can get assimilation and mixing, right? So here we have an example of, of magma mixing, like one into another. So one magma chamber kind of busts into another one and they kind of mix together, right? But they're going to have different densities potentially, so they might not mix very well, right? Uh, we can also have what we call xenoliths or incorporation of the host rock, right? So the host is the rock that the 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 uh, magma intrudes into right as you can imagine as you know the rock that's being heated around there right a lot of it's going to melt and some of it's going to break in and fall into that magma chamber right and that's going to add to uh you know the uh the, the chemistry of that magma as well right another important thing to discuss when we're talking uh um igneous rocks is viscosity right viscosity is the resistance to flow so say you have this, you know, that, that honey bear, right? And it's been sitting in your cupboard for three years and you go to squeeze it to put it on your toast and it's all just like solid and not going anywhere, right? That is highly viscous. It's sticky. It doesn't want to flow, right? But now you take that honey bear, you put them in the microwave for 30 seconds or whatever, right? And now you have nice liquid flowing honey, right? So temperature can affect viscosity, right? Higher temperatures, higher viscosity, or I'm sorry, higher temperatures, lower viscosity, right? So, you know, the, the hotter something is, right, the more flowy it's going to be. That kind of makes sense to us, right? Um, also, it's a relative to the amount of silica in there, right? More silica tends to make things more sticky, right? So again, this low viscosity lava is going to spread out, right? So low viscosity, higher temperatures, and fewer silica chains, right? Uh, high viscosity is going to dome up and pile up, right? It's not going to flow out as well, right? This is an example of high viscosity lava. Again, lower temperatures and a lot more silica chains, right? So how do we start to cool off magma? Well, there's several different ways, right? We have conduction just into the wall rocks, right? Incorporating those wall rocks uh, into, right? Not only the rocks melting, but it's also drawing heat out of the magma chamber, right? Uh, we also have water, you know, groundwater circulating through the, uh, the, uh, the ground, right? As that approaches a magma chamber, it heats up, it rises, right? It cools, it falls, it heats, it rises, it cools, it falls. And this brings a lot, so, you know, so we have another, um, um, uh, 
convection cycle going on here, right? Uh, this is going to bring in lots of cool new interesting minerals and make some interesting mineralogy, right? And then, you know, of course, the ones on the surface, those are going to cool really quick uh, in contact with air, water, you know, surface environments, right? So again, just to remind you, uh, divergent boundaries, right? Mid-ocean ridges, spreading centers, right? What happens there? This is decompression melting, right? We pull things apart. This area decompresses. That causes it to melt, right? We just lower the temperature. Right? All right. Here we go. Example, you know, down in the mantle, we have more of those intrusive uh, um uh, mafic rocks, right? Just like gabbro. And then up towards the top, we have those extrusive mafic rocks like basalts. Right? That is what we see uh, in, like, say, you know, uh, the mid ocean ridges, right? Now, same thing happens as we go on a continental rift, right? So uh, as we pull a continent apart, right? Whenever you pull something apart, you're creating new ocean basin because what fills it in the asthenosphere, right? Same thing, we're going to have decompression melting, right? But also because of all this extra heat from the asthenosphere, we're going to have what's called crustal heating, right? And just contact melting, if you will, right? So we take this, you know, this uh, these these solids, right? We, we take them and we heat them up. We don't change the pressure on them, really. We just heat them up by, by putting these magma bodies next to them. And that can cause, you know, uh, felsic and, and mafic uh, eruptions and lavas as well at these, you know, spreading centers mid-continent, right? Melting in an oceanic, oceanic convergent boundary subduction zone. Again, it's simply adding water to the plate, right? The subduction plate goes down enough heat, uh, eventually it goes down enough pressure and heat builds up. It drives a lot of that water off the plate, right? And that simply adding that water causes that asthenosphere to melt and that rises buoyantly right these mostly form mafic and intermediate style rocks right same exact process goes on at a ocean continental convergent boundary right subduction of oceanic lithosphere gets down to that certain depth we have enough heat and pressure to form uh, uh to drive the water out of the plate adding that water causes you know that rock to melt and it's going to rise buoyantly and cause a string of volcanoes, right? So how does water get into a subduction zone? Well, first of all, these oceanic plates are sitting, you know, on uh, the bottom of the ocean, right? So there's plenty of water around. And so lots of these minerals are hydrated, right? There's lots of water in the pores of these minerals, but as it goes down, right, they dehydrate and that water is driven off of those minerals, right? Now, melting can also occur at a continental-continental collision, right? Once you go past the point of metamorphosis and you kind of remelt some of those rocks, right? So even if we have continents, right, we might not get many uh, volcanoes at all, maybe just very sporadic one. But, um, you know, there can be some, some magma that's, that forms due to intense pressure, right? Hotspots are another interesting thing. So hotspots are kind of unrelated to plate tectonics. They're these deep uh, pipes, basically, that come from almost the core mantle boundary and come rising up and then, you know, create a nice conduit. And then when they hit the base of a litho, you know, of the lithosphere, they spread out like this big mushroom plume and heat the overlying lithosphere, right? As they heat that, that causes, you know, increase in temperature, causes that to rise and creates oceanic uh, islands uh, from basaltic magma, such as, you know, our, our Hawaiian islands, right? As that comes across in contact, or should I say as a, because mantle hotspots don't move, right? They they stay in the same place. It's the plates that move over them, right? Uh, so as the, 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 uh, the plate that moves over, as a continent starts to, you know, ride over top of that hotspot, you get what are called huge basalt flows or flood basalts, right? And then as that continues, and now the, the man, that mantle plume or hotspot, right, is now sitting completely underneath of one of our continents, right? This is like the scenario we have at Yellowstone. You get crustal melting in calderas with very, very felsic and highly explosive results. All right.
So just again, to see some setting these large magma chambers, right? Those oceanic hot spots, right? We just talked about those. Mid-ocean ridges with the decompression melting. Subduction, right? Adding water to the plate causes subduction, right? A continental hot spot, right? This is another same thing, but riding underneath the continent. Or continental collisions can cause melting as well. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Have a good day.